Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey and I'm the co-founder of Overthink Group. And today, we're going to talk about the content marketing machine that is Casper. You've probably seen plenty of Casper ads. They're selling you the best night's sleep that you can get. And they've made a good deal of money in the past couple of years. Uh, over $300 million from shipping mattresses to people like me. So, I wanted to dig into what makes their content marketing universe tick and I came out with some takeaways to share with you. Uh, before we get into what any company can learn from Casper, I want to take a quick look at their content properties. Um, as, as I have laid out here, uh, you can see that they've really created an ecosystem that hits their market uh, when they're thinking different sorts of things. So of course, uh, a lot of a lot of us would assume, oh well, Casper's content is going to live at Casper.com. There is plenty of content at Casper.com. There's their product pages. They have some really good uh, content around choosing a mattress size and the research and development that went into uh, designing the perfect mattress. Uh, they have. Uh, an interest in Sleepopolis, which is an affiliate website that targets some of those people uh, that are looking for a good mattress, and uh, Pillow Talk is the blog that lives on Casper.com. And so, like the obvious places where Casper keeps their content uh, is uh, in spots where people are thinking, I want a better mattress. So when people think, I want a better mattress, uh, Casper has plenty of content to reach them when they're Googling things. Uh, they target these folks with ads on specific websites. And so that's, that's one of the brackets that their content, uh, their content addresses. Uh, then you may have heard about Van Winkles. Van Winkles is a blog or an, it's kind of more like a, a magazine. Uh, that Casper produced for a while. And this isn't so much about mattresses, it's more about helping people understand sleep and just how sleep works. And uh, which you can see, like, that's really related to the idea of uh, wanting a better mattress. Like, if you understand sleep, you're probably going to end up wanting a better mattress someday. We're all going to want a better mattress someday. Mattresses don't last forever. And so uh, instead of just camping out in the territory of uh, trying to make content for people that are looking for a better mattress, Casper went a level up. They started Van Winkles and they published a lot of content that helps people understand how sleep works. Now in November of 2017, they went even broader and launch Wooly, which is uh, kind of similar to Van Winkles in that Van Winkles was a magazine publication. It wasn't branded with Casper all over it. It had its own branding. Wooly has its own branding as well. And Wooly doesn't just talk about sleep. Wooly actually addresses thoughts that kind of live in the space of, I want to live comfortably. I want to have a, a comfy life. And uh, so like, they publish things like, uh, why, do I eat, why do I like eating pizza for breakfast? Or the joys of working from home? Or uh, different concepts uh, in different cultures uh, surrounding living a comfortable life. So it's pretty interesting to see that they've set up this content ecosystem in a way that uh, captures people at a very, very broad high level, like mattress isn't really on their mind, they just want to enrich their lives uh, with comfort. Now they have something a little bit closer to home uh, with uh, Van Winkles. Van Winkles was discontinued in, uh, the, at the end of 2017, uh, by the way. Um, so, so they have more content here that says, if you want to understand sleep better, then we got you there. Like, so if you Google, uh, why are birds so loud at night, Van Winkles is uh, the number one result. So, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then of course they have plenty of content that you would expect from a mattress company about mattresses. Uh, so that's where the content lives. And you can see in the blog post version of this teardown, 
uh, more detail, but I've also uh, given, given a snapshot of uh, where that traffic is coming from. And that's pretty interesting too. When you look at the, the really broad content, Wooly, uh, about 41% of their traffic comes directly there, which could be people just thinking, hey, I like reading Wooly and I'll go there, or it could just be similar web uh, confusing direct data or a d direct search with search that comes from uh, Casper's newsletter. I've seen some, some stuff there. I don't know because I don't work at Casper. Uh, but they're getting a lot, of, uh, a lot of traffic from direct and then the second largest source of traffic for them is social. Which makes sense. They're not writing about the sort of stuff that people, uh, that, that answers questions so much as excites interest. It's the sort of stuff that would get shared, but not necessarily that would get searched, which is pretty interesting. Van Winkles, on the other hand, now remember, this is like rich journalism about sleep itself. Uh, they get 84% of, uh, of their traffic from search. No surprises there. They have a lot of great content that answers a lot of questions about sleep and sleep aids and dreaming and all that cool stuff. Pillow Talk, which is Casper's uh, branded company blog, it's, uh, lives on casper.com, uh, uh, subdomain there. Uh, they get 28% uh, of their traffic from search, so they are answering some questions that people Google, and they also get about 26% of their traffic from social, so it's pretty balanced on that front. Uh, and then casper.com, almost half of their traffic comes from search, and about a quarter of their traffic, 22% of their traffic comes from direct traffic, uh, just people going directly to casper.com, which isn't all that surprising because Casper's brand is so strong. And that takes us to some of the takeaways that I want to, that I want to get into here. So after looking through all of Casper's content, I thought, what are some things that anyone would be able to do? So whether you're a competitor of Casper uh, or you're just trying to appeal to a broad base of consumers, then of course there are some uh, B2B application, uh, applications here as well. Uh, but I pulled out eight takeaways and you can read a lot more about this in the post below. Uh, but let's jump in here. Uh, pursuant to Casper's uh, mass of search and direct traffic, Casper built a brand that people Google, and you should do the same. Uh, it's really interesting to see that there are about 72,000 searches a month uh, for best mattress. People Google best mattress 72,000 times a month. But people Google Casper mattress 347,000 times a month. That is just absurd. That's almost five times the, uh, the search volume for Casper mattress than the search volume for best mattress, which is really, really interesting. Now, how do you build a brand like that? Well, obviously Casper has insane amounts of money and so they bought a bunch of ads. Uh, so building a brand that people can Google, yeah, that that can get expensive, but you can also get people Googling uh, your, your brand by making great content that gets uh, press coverage, uh, doing cool things that get press coverage, uh, launching new features, and really just making the most of any good story that you have to tell uh, that makes your brand name just stick in people's minds and say, hmm, I, I want to Google those people. Answering stupid questions is something that Casper has done really well. Uh, if you Google mattress sizes, they are one of the only mattress startups that appears in the search engine results pages. Most of that content is just dominated by the incumbent big mattress companies. Uh, and, you know, that kind of makes sense. It's not always the easiest sell uh, to say, hey, let's make some content that answers some, uh, some elementary questions about our product. And that's a weakness that marketers can have because we're so familiar 
with our own offerings that sometimes things that are super obvious to us, uh, we, we assume are super obvious to other people. And so we don't make the content that answers the questions that people have, and then we miss out on traffic. Uh, anyone who works at a mattress startup who's watching this uh, should consider uh, taking a look at what Casper has done on the mattress sizing front because they really upped the ante when it comes to explaining uh, the mattress sizes versus how the larger mattress companies have done so. Uh, it's, it's a good opportunity and I, I think that even, even Casper could probably be dunked on in some of those respects. Takeaway number three, Casper does a pretty good job of giving every piece of content they produce a job. And it's not that every single blog post you make or every single infographic you make needs to have only one job, but you should have a really good idea of what any piece of content you produce is going to do for you. Uh, and Casper's content tends to have a pretty obvious job given to it. So most posts on Pillow Talk either link to uh, a Casper product page or maybe they invite people to take a survey because Casper is doing some research for developing new products. Um, every piece of content that Casper produces seems to have a pretty obvious job. Even if that job is just to attract enough of an audience uh, for Casper to go back and retarget with ads for more of their product. Number four, uh, solve problems that are adjacent to your product. This is really similar to, or this, this is like right, right in line with what Casper did with Van Winkles. Um, not very many people are waking up at 4 a.m. because there are birds being really, really loud outside their apartment window and thinking, I really need a better mattress. But they are wondering why birds would be so loud so early, before dawn. So they might think, ah, oh, I'm so tired of these birds keeping me up. And then they Google, why are birds so loud so early? And then they get to Van Winkles. And now they are part of, they, they have encountered the Casper content ecosystem. They are part of that retargeting audience. And uh, they, they're thinking about sleep. And it's to Casper's benefit for anyone who's thinking about sleep to also be thinking about Casper. Uh, number five, uh, not every piece of content needs to sell. Uh, so this is kind of strategic. Like if you're, if you're playing chess, uh, different chess pieces are used for different ends, and content is kind of similar to that. So not every piece of content needs to be uh, pushing the product uh, that you're selling. Some content is going to perform best just by attracting links to your website. Some content is some content is going to be really good for uh, getting a lot of social shares and just you know building more of that brand that we talked about. Uh, so not only do you want to give every piece of content a job, but that job does not always need to be sell your stuff. Uh, an interesting thing that we found is, uh, and this is the sixth takeaway, is that Casper put a lot of energy into creating the Van Winkles site. And they promised that there would be 10 daily new posts on Van Winkles. And there were a few days when Van Winkles hit 10 posts published, but that didn't last very long. Uh, so uh, a, a note for, for us is it's great to outproduce the competition. That's, that's fantastic. If you're the one with all the answers and all the great content and you can just flood the market with knowledge in a way that your competitors can't keep up with, that's great. Uh, but overproducing isn't all that great either. Uh, there is a lot of content that's on Van Winkles that isn't going to see, uh, you know, it's not going to get as much promotion attention from the marketing department. And this is something that I see happening in marketing departments a lot is you create a ton of content and that's really good, but if you create more content than you can promote, then that content doesn't really bring you the wins that it otherwise could. So keep that in mind. 
Uh, matching your market styles and ideas. This is something that's really interesting about Wooly, uh, and we'll want to keep an eye on it because it's only, at, at the time I'm filming this video, Wooly's only about six months old. So it's kind of too close to call in terms of, well, what has Wooly done and is Wooly going to be a big success that Casper keeps around or will they retire it like Van Winkles? We don't know. Uh, but Wooly does match some of the market uh, style and ideals uh, that they were trying to reach. For a while, uh, when you heard about Casper, or at least when I heard about Casper, I would uh, hear about the research and development that they had put into designing and engineering a fantastic mattress. Uh, but on Wooly, you're going to hear about why people love to eat cold pizza for breakfast. Not the same at all but it is targeting people that are going to need a mattress someday and are probably going to be more likely to buy a mattress from a company that has already aligned themselves in their minds uh, on what it means to be comfortable. And last, an interesting thing that Casper has done that any company can, uh, can take away from this is they sponsor their unbranded or sub-branded content. So when you go to Wooly's website, you don't just see Wooly the magazine. You see ads for Casper that are, that are all over that site. They're, you know, they're, they're not shy about it. It's interesting because the, the voice of Wooly isn't 100% the voice of Casper. The voice of Van Winkles wasn't 100% the voice of Casper. And so with those different voices, uh, Casper has just sponsored the voices that are not Casper. And that's a cool thing for companies that want to produce a lot of content to keep in mind. If it's not part of your brand, then you can just sponsor it with your brand. And that's, that's a way for you to get exposure without necessarily muddling the, the way you come across to that new audience. That is the Casper Content Marketing Teardown. I hope you've enjoyed it. Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.